Well, I just want to take a few moments to make sure I give this two cents and a nickel. Uh, once again, I am trying to prepare parents and leaders to, especially leaders who uh, are addressing or teaching, uh, you know, youth ministry leaders. Uh, we need to pay attention to some of the things that I taught in my CEU class in regards to public safety and safety and ministry. But I did want to bring this out because we've got so much murder and violence going on. And as you see, almost every day we are facing a lot of bloodshed. So many women look like every week or look like every other day. Uh, you know, it's being murdered. But let's get back into this because the spirit of murder has been released in a great way. But I want to talk to you about some signs that you need to pay attention to because these spirits in these unsaved homes, uh, these adults or even the church leadership and uh, family parents who are having a form of godliness, these are gateways that are open to these children, they want to use these children's bodies uh, in order to be able to, you know, wreak havoc in the house. So many of these spirits have already been released and have taken control of these children's body and mind. And so this is the reason why a lot of bloodshed has come and kids are committing suicide and killing their parents and so on. And so I want to kind of give you some signs for you to look at and hopefully you'll be able to share this because some parents are dealing with some real rebellious and defiant children who they can't understand all of a sudden. They're, you know, they're just acting out. Now, a lot of uh, deliverance ministry is going on in churches and in ministries that are hosting revivals and et cetera. And these children are being, you know, in there where there's gates open in families who are only getting a surface type of deliverance. They're not getting root deliverance. And these children are open gateways for, you know, these spirits to go into these innocent beings, these innocent souls, because the families are spiritually ignorant. And then the children are open to these spirits to go into somewhere to um, use them to, uh, you know, wreak havoc and bloodshed. And so we got to remember that the spirit of murder and violence is going to become more powerful as the time, as the end times are increasing. And so you can see that, as I said earlier on, not a single day is passing internationally. There is bloodshed and there is violence on every level. Um, I mean, we won't even mention the spirit of perversion. I mean, so it is getting worse and worse. And so every year we got to think about it. There is an increasing number of bloodshed, if you notice, among youth and or self-harm because many of them are cutting or killing themselves and suicide and so on. But some of these uh, killings are so horrible, we nobody can even phantom what would be in the mind of a father or, you know, a relative to suddenly just go on a killing spree. But these babies, I want to give some signs because of the, the times that we're in and these children are seeing all types of demonic spirits and ghosts. Uh, and so, and they are real. These are fallen demonic angels. And so one of the signs that you may be able to see is that your child began to run around very fearful or, you know, or they feel like that they're seeing something outside and all of a sudden they'll come inside screaming and yelling and come see and I'm afraid. And it is because that spirit may not have gotten authority to come on the inside yet. And so they are lurking around for whatever reason or that ground has not been blessed. And so many times those spirits linger around the outside, so they have territorial reason. And these children, they're trying to see how they can maneuver a way to get out in the body of the child. So that child will be running and scared, you know. And many of the adults are even seeing these spirits. So on the other the way is that your child will suddenly get nervous or they're, they begin to uh, be in a, maybe in a public place where they're seeing things and their eyes are, you know, just piercing, you know, in the, I mean, peering in this one place. And so you've got to pay, pay attention to that as well. Or 
your child has a long history of sleeping trouble, you know, usually starting as a baby, sometimes, you know, when they're toddlers. And through the night, you'll find sometimes babies just constantly screaming as soon as they wake up. Now, there's a lot of torment that could be going on with that child, but, you know, that's too long of a lesson to talk about right now. But I did want to talk about just the sleep disturbances and kids that are waking up and crying and afraid they want to be in the bed with you and holding you really tight. Now, I went through that with my daughter when she was little. Um, she often said that she it was a monster in her room, uh, and so she always wanted to sleep with me. But later on, I did learn that it was just an attachment because she was spoiled and she wanted to always be in bed with me because she was spoiled. But uh, as I grew more in the spirit and learning, I did learn that there was some truth to some things that she said she saw out of fear. You know, and many of those things probably were manifesting because I was doing all kind of stuff and having me in and out of the house back then when I wasn't saved, you know, uh, and all kind of spirits was lurking around in that house. And so we got to make sure we pay close attention, especially for these single or these unmarried uh you know, relationships that you know, we've got to be praying and standing in the gap for them to understand how serious this is when we have gates open, you know, and we have children. And then another uh, sign that you can see is that your child frequently stares off, as I said, into these empty spaces and these blank walls or looking in the corners, just standing there looking. You can rest assured that there is a spirit probably trying to encourage them to come here or, or play with them. Now, uh, my, I did mention to you all in a couple of sessions that I may have done and not talked about how that little spirit uh, tried to tell my granddaughter that if she told me that it was going to kill me and her. But I thank God that she did come to me so that I could kill it, uh, you know, destroy it from the house. And this house that she saw it in was not my house, but we were at my mom's house and the spirit was attacking her in her room. Uh, but I thank God that uh, she ran and came and got me, and she said the little thing was running behind her. But uh, she said it was at the door, but it would not come in the room where I was. She jumped in the bed with me afraid. But I'm telling you right now, this is real. And then the second sign is that your child, they begin to talk to these particular, you know, people, or they say they see monsters or whatever that we can't see, but they can. And so uh, and that's the same way it was with my granddaughter. She kept saying, look, Grandma, see right there, it's so ugly. And I couldn't see it. She said it was standing at the door. Uh, and I couldn't see it, but I'm telling you right now, its ultimate goal is to destroy the mind and put so much fear in these children to the point they can't take it anymore. They begin to self-medicate, they begin to snort stuff and do whatever to make them high or go to sleep, or these babies are just so bad, they begin to all of a sudden act, start acting up in school and doing all kinds of stuff because they're fearful or they're, you know, they're being tormented by these spirits that's telling them. I know I had a couple of kids that came to me for counseling. Parents brought them to me, and they told me that uh, these kids were saying over and over again that they did not want to uh, go to school, that they hated school, and they hated their teachers. And they also were saying that the kids were telling them over and over again that they're not going to do the work and they're not going to. You know, these are little kids that were five and six years old, and a lot of these kids, Kids, you know, they just wanted to hurt some of the other kids. They wanted to do things and tearing up the room and cursing and doing things that you would think you wouldn't believe that your child would do. Just all of a sudden, they begin to have this bad behavior. But when you talk to these parents, you can clearly see that there's a lot of hell gateways open in the house. You know, people just don't want to recognize the fact that a lot of these things that they're doing or even, you know, I'm not going to just be jumping on men, but we got women, too, that's watching pornography and doing all these, uh, you know, I just call it nasty things. I'm just going to call it what it is, these nasty, unclean things and allowing these unclean people and things coming in their house and, you know, and even spending the night. Some of these kids that are coming from homes that are unclean, unclean spirits, you know, because these kids are, are really doing a whole bunch of things. You'd be surprised if these kids are touching one another and, you know, trying to have oral sex and putting fingers inside the genitals. I'm telling you right now, these spirits are being shifted and they are manifesting in the the bodies and the minds of these children and adults, and this is why so much bloodshed and, uh, you know, uh, perversion going on, and even in these small children. And then the other thing that you can see a sign is that they begin to talk to 
or, or about individuals or, or people that could possibly be dead. Uh, they'll start to say their grandma is or so on and talking to grandpa, and you can't see them, but they can talking to the dead. And so that's very serious. Or they, uh, the next thing is they'll begin to point and talk about this particular animal or whatever, and you don't see the horse, so you don't see the dog. Uh, so they'll point and talk about that, or they'll have conversations with uh, absolutely nothing, just space. They're standing there talking into space, and you're wondering, what in the world is going on? And you'll say, stop talking. Or the other thing is they begin to have a little tea party or sharing. We call that little fun stuff, a cute, that they made their imaginary friend, when actually it is really, really manifested. Uh, these are spirits. Many of them are in homes. Many of them are not rested spirits. Many of them are children that have died in these houses or or related to family members, and they're not at rest. And so those spirits have come back, and they're moving around. So we have to be very, very careful about allowing our children to have food set up or acting like they're giving food or having a fight with a spirit or whatever, a conversation. It's very important to pay attention to your child, especially when they start suddenly changing their behavior or getting nervous and scared, whether it's at home or in a public place. Please pay attention to their eyes. Please pay attention to uh, their breathing. You can tell when their eyes change or when their behavior starts to change. A spirit has either entered them or they are very, very fearful. Now, I want to share briefly before I get off of here how important it is that we pray strategically for these babies and then make sure that you, uh, you know, look at how these spirits are entering because if these kids are very angry, maybe they've been punished because that's a big way for these, uh, the spirit of murder and violence to enter, of course, because uh, the spirit of unforgiveness, jealousy of their own siblings, or they're angry, or they're bitter, you know, and they, uh, they're very uh, defiant. We've got to pay close attention to that. And many of these things grow up from childhood to adulthood, so we have a whole lot of adult children who are behaving the same way because they're still bitter with their parents or their grandparents or their children. And these spirits are growing up. And like I always say, you better kill it before it get grown. But one of the things that I am really, really uh, hovering on today, which I was really moved to send this, is because of the end time murder and violence, you know, and because of the fact that the enemy is coming against the kingdom, which it will not prevail. But we have to get more education and we have to be more aware about how the enemy is using these killing sprees to be able to, you know, to allow the bloodshed to go in different regions and reason why we got, you know, in all parts of the city, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, there is a spirit of murder, especially against families, marriages, and children, just killing the whole house and, and these women, just killing them. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't even fathom that the person would do that. But that spirit of death, of course, in this, in this region that these things are happening is because this person has allowed themselves to, uh, you know, get into this place where they will not seek counsel. They will not uh, try to talk about the issues. They keep it quiet. According to John 8 and 44, the Bible reminds us that, you know, about Satan, he was a murderer from the beginning of time, and he abode in the, you know, in the place where he wants to come to destroy families. This is why he rests in these places. And the very character of the devil is going to work right smack dab in the middle of wherever there is a little seed of anger, of bitterness, or unforgiveness. And so the devil, that he is on his job, and we must be on ours. Why? Because his ultimate goal is to destroy the family, is to destroy the house. And so that's basically all I want to share with you now. I also want you to make sure that you pay attention to any of the areas that may be causing the child to have mind control or the individual that may be in the house that may have witchcraft going on there. But you've got to remember, these kids are seeing serious. These kids are talking to ghosts. These kids are afraid, and these demons are trying to get the bodies of these children to live in and so and to act through. And so you got to know before this happens or before this continues or get any bigger, you've got to take some time to talk to your child, ask your 
your child questions. Don't just say, oh, go on, get out of here with that crazy mess. You have got to talk to them. You have got to ask them questions. Have you seen or do you ever? Uh, and I know when my uh, grandbabies were smaller, I would always ask them all kind of questions. Have you ever seen this? Did this ever do that? Have you ever, did this ever happen to you? You know, and they'll tell me what they've seen like, and that kind of thing. And I pray over them because what the enemy wants to do is have them believe that they're crazy or that, you know, these things are acceptable. And they are not acceptable. And we've got to make sure hell knows it's not acceptable and hell has no rule in your house. But at this point, if you do not check with your child, if you do not check with your grandchild, and no matter how anointed you may be or that your house may be sanctified, that spirit is working through that child. And so it can find a gateway to open and come in and try to uh, manifest or try to uh, work on that child in your house, and then those spirits will be released. And so I just wanted to bring that out to you today, yes. There are signs I just gave you that these kids are seeing spirits and these spirits are uh, harassing these children. And we've got to make sure that we focus our eyes on the things that the kids are telling us because these spirits do have the ability to try to get inside and work on these kids' minds. And these kids many times are seeing things before they even happen. I know my granddaughter used to see things or tell me stuff that she would dream or whatever. So we've got to even ask them about their dreams that they're seeing, you know, or, or you know, in, in visions that they're seeing so we can see how to pray. And so I want to pray this prayer and for you to get a revelation to understand that these doors and these entry points uh, that uh, uh, John Eckhart talked about in his book on fasting and breaking the deliverance ministry uh, booklet, you want to get that. And, and he talked really great about, you know, fasting to see the salvation of our children and the protecting our children. And his scripture in here is talking about Colossians 4 and 3. He says, while praying also for us that God would open to us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. And he was talking about the doors of entry. He said the door of entry points that provide access. He said God access into a family can come through one person. Every person is connected to someone, and everyone has some influence in another's life. And he said families consist of strong interpersonal relationships that God uses to connect people to the gospel and salvation. And so we got to make sure that we use what God has given us to protect our families, to pray for our families, to keep them from the sufferings and the torment of these demonic forces that are coming to destroy families and these children because they're so innocent. And so he talked about in here also about the different contexts of the salvation, to help save them, to protect them, uh, you know, and to have sound, you know, sound rescue as we talk about areas of danger or injury to them. And we got to pray for all of our family, not just our children, to have, you know, the protection to save them, uh, you know, from the suffering and the perishing, you know, from disease, and to make them well and heal and to restore them, you know, and to preserve them, any danger or destruction that may come to them. And, of course, to deliver them from those principalities that we can't even see. And we need to be praying for the war and Angel Michael to find out every half, you know, and to stand the gap. We are covenant believers, so we can open and shut the gates of hell. We can open heaven, but we can't do anything if we want to keep denying the fact that hell is on earth and it is operating not only through adults, but in these babies today. Lord, help today. And so I want to pray this prayer of salvation because my bell is about to ring. I just pray that you would look at the full measure of rule that God has given you, and that is full authority over your family, whether you're a man or a woman listening to this, or whether you are a single woman. You have the authority of your home over your children, and you can take authority and stand the gap for your babies. And so I want to pray this prayer that he has in here for the salvation, and I believe it's a good prayer to pray simply because we can declare lordship which means that Jesus is Lord in our homes and that our family is whole and our family is safe and that our family uh, has decided that we're going to have our house is going to be uh, for the Lord and not for the world. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
God, you are the faithful Lord and Savior and the covenant-keeping God. And so, Father, we're asking in Jesus' name that you would keep your covenant and help us, God, to keep our covenant and loyalty to a thousand generations. And that, Lord, that we have a covenant with you through the blood of Jesus, which provides salvation, forgiveness, and blessings to our lives. And so you promised Abraham, Father, that through his seed, all families on the earth would be blessed. So in Jesus' name, we thank you in advance for the blessing of safety and healing and deliverance to our children and to our loved ones. And, Father, we thank you that Jesus has promised us to see, and through him our family can be blessed. So in Jesus' name, we decree that we come before you, Daddy, on behalf of our family, Lord. And we ask you, Lord God, for our salvation of our seed and our protection of our seed and deliverance, Father, and healing to manifest now in the name of Jesus and our family. And, Father, we pray, Lord God, even now, concerning the bloodshed and all over the nation, Father, and those who have lost loved ones and those, Lord God, who are still still wailing and grieving behind the spirit of murder and bloodshed in this nation, whether there was a child, Lord God, whether it was a storm, Lord God, whether it was a murder, Lord. We're just praying for anyone, Lord God, in this nation, in any family, God, and in our family, God, who is in covenant with you to be drawn to you by your spirit and to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I pray for covenant blessings to come to my family and to the family, Lord God, that is listening on the sound of my voice and that my family and their family will benefit from this covenant blessing, Father. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name that you're having mercy upon our family and that you're going to touch our children, God, and that you're going to protect our children, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over their eyes and we put a shield of your blood around them God, and we ask God that you would let your loving kindness and your tender mercy be over us and our children, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you let your grace and your mercy and your favor be upon our families, God, and our children. And we thank you, God, that you let in my family even now, God, in this generation, God, be blessed. In our generations, we decree that they are blessed. Lord, we thank you that they are highly favored. We thank you, Lord God, that you're letting our generations to come and walk in covenant with you and be blessed, Father, by the power of your blood and your cross. And so, Lord, we decree that our family is saved. We thank you that they are protected. We thank you, Lord God, that in Jesus' name that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we decree that Satan is bound. So we bind up every spirit, Lord God, of, of depression, every spirit, Lord God, of mental illness and anger and bloodshed and hate, Lord God. And we send back every fear that has caused them to lose faith and hope. And we decree, Lord God, that their faith is, is increased now and that you are praying now on our behalf, God, for what we pray of miss it to it. Help our unbelief in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I stand the gap now for my seed and those that are listening. The Lord, that your word will come to every family and every soul under the sound of my voice's family, that you will help us to believe you, Lord God and not the devil. We give you praise, honor, and glory as we bind and rebuke every demon, Lord God, that has been assigned to our family members, God, to prevent them from receiving salvation and protection. By the power of your presence, we decree that you are covering them now by the power of your blood. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are letting our salvation, that you're letting us stand in the gap even now, Lord God, and that you are sending your angels toward God in our households, and that you're letting our households be like the house of Obed and Edom, Lord, even now, according to 2 Samuel 6 and 11. We decree wholeness in no other name but Jesus. And it is so, according to Colossians 2 and 10, that says that you are the, the head of all principalities and powers. In no other name but Jesus, we declare wholeness and completeness in your name. Amen. It is so. All right. I just pray that you share this message. God bless you. And that's my two cents and a nipple.